Hello everybody, my name is Eric and today we're going to be talking about this async rat that I've been seeing going around. I discovered this in my Discord. Someone had a was having suspicious problems with their computer and after using ChatGPT to try and diagnose it, uh, it did a surprisingly good job after a bit of prompting. Initially it just sort of thought, well, maybe there was a glitch, but it discovered that PowerShell was being injected, which meant the user couldn't use PowerShell because I think they, they had some developer stuff, and that's how they figured out something was wrong. But what they didn't realize was the something that was wrong was a rat. So a bit like one of my most popular videos where I've shown you uh, how certain settings being changed can be a red flag. We're gonna try we're gonna look at that again. We're gonna run this. Uh, and this is what we believe is probably the entry point. And what it does is it will create in program data a folder called player 800. Now, if you have the player 800 folder anywhere, that's the big red flag. And that's how I was able to find this malware is I went to anyone's threat intelligence and I put in player 800. So let's see what's happened now. So we've got this batch file. We're going to take a look at this source code. So this is the key. This is why now if the user tries to use PowerShell, and that's how they notice something was up is every time a task would get triggered, and we'll give it some time, uh, their PowerShell would disappear. Now, let's see uh, what's in this PS1 file. Now, you can see the 4D5A, and you can immediately guess that there's probably a PE binary here, because that would type out MZ, which is the magic. MXU4, got some other binary stuff going on here, and then we've got a trick that is sometimes used for you add characters to try and hide whatever's going on here. C, Windows, MI, something, Microsoft.net, Frame. That's probably going to be Framework. And that is calling the compiler. Now, I think the objective here is just to be a bit, they're trying to be stealthy. So let's see uh, what we can do to get rid of this. How detected is it? And how deep into the system is this mess of malware? So one of the ways that it persists itself is task scheduler. Now, what I don't know currently is where this is coming from. It's possible this campaign is being distributed multiple ways. They thought it may have come from a game launcher, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So, every three minutes, the core malware repeats itself. And the main tell... Oh, look, our PowerShell is gone, right? Now we can reboot, and this will stay here. And it also seems to have gone to some other places. A different version puts all of those folders in public instead, and it seems like this has been around for a while. There is even a reference to Player 800 on a uh, what looks like a sketchy PC cleaner type of thing, and the user has actually reported, yes, this is a virus, or more accurately, this is a remote access trojan. And it seems to be hitting other people. We can see on Bleeping Computer someone has detected... This. this is a form where people can go for free malware help. It's, it's a good resource. And they were suggested to run the Thalbal Recovery Scan tool, which is a manual tool that can be used in conjunction with an expert on something like the Bleeping Computer forms to remove malware. Now, just to show you more of what it does, because it's a bit sneaky, uh, we can see the full chain here in the sandbox run. So first of all, PowerShell will execute this. That seems to be the entry point. Then uh, a Windows script runner will run a VB script. Now, the good news is Microsoft is actually deprecating VB script in recent versions of Windows. So this may cease to be a part of some obfuscation tricks. Now, VB script, this is simply used to run the batch file, which then creates persistency to run uh, cultural.vbs which is just a loader for the batch file, which then ultimately runs the PowerShell script that does the real malware. Now that will then uh, trigger ASP.NET compiler.exe, which will materialize the real malware. And then it just runs endlessly in perpetuity. And we can see from the config, uh, we can learn a bit more. Uh, we've got a fake website that once again could look legitimate, windowscam.casacam.net, and we'll take a look at what's uh, if that site is still up. Build our PowerShell again. That shows you that this is still running. It also says here that it installs something in percent app data percent according to the config, but it doesn't appear to actually do that. 
but we can check for the local. Now, the main reason that malware will do stuff like this, uh, and this is a form, I wouldn't call it fileless malware because there's still a file involved. It's not in entirely being materialized over the internet or the registry. But the trick here is by putting it there in a PowerShell script, the malware executable, which is going to be more widely detected, never gets caught. Now we can look and the script for this is actually more readable than you might expect. We got hexatobyte, binary to string, and what they've essentially done here is just got a bunch of hex strings. So they got serve, and then we got data. You can see both of those are going to be together. These both look like portable executables to me. So we can see, okay, got these two. Then we got two little uh, binary strings. And then we get rid of the exclamation marks. That's a pretty lazy uh, obfuscation technique. You can see that this uh, domain that was being used uh, as the C2 is a dynamic DNS site. Now, luckily, any run in other sandboxes will immediately catch that that's probably not a legitimate. There's very few reasons. There are legitimate uh, reasons. And we can see, okay, so there is something running on that domain, but it doesn't give us a response. And the name makes it look like it's some sort of uh, security cam. Windows Cam, which said sounds like Windows Scam, which is actually quite a good name for what's going on here. No web server running on that. But if we look through the connections, we can see some of the C2 activity here. We can also track the specific behavior of the ASP.NET compiler with Procmon, which I've had running the whole time, a tool that allows you to see some of the Windows API activity of a payload. This particular payload, other than killing PowerShell, and I don't think that's actually intentional, doesn't have a lot of anti-analysis. What it does have is fair amount of persistence, and it seems to vary by the version with how much. Mine seems to rely primarily on task scheduler, but what they can do that is by no means, it doesn't mean it's impossible to get rid of, and we'll look at ways of getting rid of it in a second here, but by making it so that it repopulates itself every three minutes. Uh, if you get unlucky, you might just not succeed at getting it down in time. We can see here all of what seems to have happened. So these early ones are just going to be uh, basic functionality. Then we can see reg create, reg, reg open key. That's basically all going to be inadvertent. So we'll actually remove the registry events from the filter so that we can, so that we have less noise. And here we can see the start of what looks like C2 activity. That's the same IP address we saw, right? And it's using the name of the computer from here to this suspicious website. So how do we get rid of this? So we can see this player 800 uh, control.vbs. That seems to be the key uh, persistency. So first of all, we gotta be sure this isn't running. So we are going to look uh, for the actual ASP.NET compiler. Now this is where the rat has installed itself. And we can create a memory dump if we want to confirm that. And in fact, uh, we don't even need any sensitive uh, analysis tools to confirm this. Uh, we can actually go with a simple control F in notepad and we can see async rat server. Uh, there is no secrets here. And we can see other indicators of compromise here. So we could remove it manually. First of all, I'm curious to see if Emisoft Emergency Kit, which is a tool that I would often recommend when you're stalling, you think you have malware, start with Emisoft Emergency Kit. Start with uh, uh, Hitman Pro. Those kind of tools will usually uh, find your malware. Of course, if you know you're infected and they don't find it, then you've got then you're going to need more steps. And of course, you may decide, well, I think I should just reinstall Windows because you're not going to trust the system after this, and that's also uh, fine. But if you don't want to do that, uh, this is a good first step. So we install it. And the good thing about modern malware is it tends to be a lot less invasive. It probably doesn't uh, go through every possible length to stop you from installing antivirus software because that's so easy to detect. This one really was a case of almost got them. They didn't have that very blunt PowerShell hit. Uh, this might have been completely undetected by our victim. Let's see if Emisoft Emergency Kit can tag this. I'm 50-50. The script itself should look suspicious, but the fact that without a behavioral detection, it's not an EXE and the async rat is obfuscated. 
You know, right now you should leave a comment. Do you think we're going to catch it with the antivirus or not? Wow. <laughs> right as I say that. It's like, uh, looks like, yep, it catches the installer. It catches that. At least it seems to catch everything that introduced it. And we got Visual Basic or VB Script, Trojan, Valeria, Generic KD. Yep, looks like we've caught everything. And unlike some of the other rats I've shown, this doesn't seem to use the R77 user mode rootkit. It is stealthy in that it injects into a process, so you might not immediately catch it. You can also set it to immediately quarantine all of these detections uh, when it is done. The other thing that our victim noticed, and I believe this is because their antivirus had removed a part, but not all of the threat, uh, was... Okay, there. No, it's fine. Uh, they were constantly getting an error that uh, the script was not found. So let's see, first of all, has the payload itself died? Every time they opened PowerShell, because there was a trigger uh, for them, it didn't work. So ASP.NET compiler is still running. So the rat is still running, despite the fact that we've removed uh, the auto runner. Now let's look down and see if there's anything happening here. Let's see if we can actually find these logs. Right now, it doesn't seem like anyone is actually watching our computer, so we should be good to go. But, of course, whenever you're ratted, this is always a risk when you're removing it. Let's see what's in this log. Oh, that's interesting. So that's a part of the spyware component here, if you ever wondered how that worked. Uh, I, I was expecting this to be like a C2 log, but no, this is uh, everything that you do on the computer when this spyware is installed will report it. So now let's try rebooting the computer and see if this comes back. I'm hoping because Emisoft Emergency Kit removed it that it won't, but there's a possibility because it didn't kill, it didn't catch the final piece of that, mainly because the second opinion scanner doesn't usually check that kind of stuff. Also, it didn't catch our memory dump, which contained an intact async rat. Now we can see the rat process is gone. Uh, we can open a PowerShell. Let's see if that survives. File I downloaded from my sample server is also gone, but Two pieces of the payload are left, but I would not expect them. And that's why the error message can show up. So let's see. So this is gone. So with any luck, PowerShell is still going to crash because of this. Now let's also check what XX does. Oh, it creates the task. So that's also not going to do anything harmful. So let's see what happens. We'll go to task scheduler. And it's weird to me that it doesn't kill that as well. Yep, that's still here. Just try... And there we go. So if you see this kind of an error, anything with that folder, that means chances are your antivirus has removed a part of the problem. So we can just delete this now. And as we can see, as the tell would be, there's no ASP net running here. So we have gotten rid of the infection. So that's going to be all from me for now. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought about this. Uh, this was an interesting one. Uh, it's not just rat that had been partially removed, looked like a computer glitch, but no, it was actually uh, hiding the fact you got ratted. So to finish off, what do you do besides running a second opinion scanner, running your antivirus, trying to get rid of it? Uh, once you've gotten rid of the rat, what do you do? Well, you think about, especially with a rat, which as I've said is interactive, meaning they can, it's not just going to steal a pre-programmed stuff, it can steal anything on your computer. So anything that was stored or accessible on that computer I would not be trusting. I would try and change. If you stored your credit card numbers on your computer, you probably want to change that. If you had logins to things, changing those, I would change every single password you use. You also got to watch out. Sometimes people will try and contact you, try and get money out of you. Do not pay. Uh, pay paying extortion for this kind of thing, there, there's no benefit. Uh, no, no reason for them to keep their word. They will probably just keep coming back to you for more and more money. So that's not really worth proceeding with. I would also check your uh, messaging app, stuff like Discord, your emails, see is there anything suspicious in sent, anything that you didn't send. Uh, you could also ask a friend, like have you received any weird messages? You don't know, you don't know what they were planning on doing. Some rats are just there for not really any reason. Some will be doing stuff. Uh, that's most of what you should do. Of course, if you know how to do it or you know who did it to you, then you might also want to look into uh, working with law enforcement. So that's going to be all for me for now. Bye.